Hi there, I'm Patsy Thompson and I've been getting a lot of emails asking me about all the different types of machine embroidery that I use for applique in my quilts. So I thought maybe it would be a good idea if we put together a little tutorial showing different types of machine embroidery. Machine embroidery really allows you to add understated kinds of adornments to your applique shapes or thread work that lends intricate details to your applique shapes or even larger areas of embroidery that completely transform the applique shape. If you're a thread lover like me, you'll really love using thread to enhance all the applique work on your quilts. Now this first technique is what I call regular machine embroidery because it's been around forever, but you can decorate your applique shapes with tons of really beautiful decorative stitches and you can do it with your home domestic sewing machine because today just about every home domestic sewing machine that's on the market has tons of beautiful decorative stitches to choose from. Here. I've started with a quilt block composed of fusible applique and I'm using the blanket stitch to finish the edges of this flower shape. This type of edge finishing can be done with any of the numerous programmed embroidery stitches that come on your sewing machine. Notice that as I work, I'm directing the movement of this block with my hands. In order to follow the outer edge of this shape, I need to periodically pivot this block so that my stitches remain perpendicular to that outer applique edge. No matter what decorative stitch you choose, when you do applique edge finishing with this technique, you will need to be guiding the entire process. Now sometimes, you'll need to be making alterations in the stitch itself as you work. Here, for example, I need to taper my stitch width as I enter or leave each point on this applique leaf shape. This kind of detail is important, and if you don't pay attention to these details, all the lovely intricacy of your shape will be lost and the embroidery will appear messy. The next technique is called free motion machine embroidery. Now this is just like free motion machine quilting except there is no batting and there is no backing fabric. But you'll be able to create any design, any design in the whole wide world because you can stitch in any direction you choose. So what you see here is a portion of a quilt top I'm working on. Now I've got my machine set up for straight stitch free motion mode and now I'm going to finish the edges of one of these swirls using free motion machine embroidery. I'm using what I call the EKG edge finishing design and all I'm doing here is to rock back and forth creating a series of V shapes of different lengths along the inside edge of the swirl. I'm taking care to keep those V shapes perpendicular to the edge and this means that I am gently pivoting my quilt top as I work. Just like the first type of machine embroidery we learned, it's easy to do this kind of work at this stage because there is no batting or backing fabric and this minimizes the bulk that I need to fit into that throat space of my machine. I can also use free motion machine embroidery to decorate the insides of applique shapes. Here I'm adding some intricate detail to the heart shape in this large quilt block and as you can see I'm just drawing lines with thread just like I would if I were doodling on a piece of paper. Again this is just like free motion quilting except there is no batting or backing fabric. Once the quilt is pieced and in the final quilt sandwich, I'll stitch just outside the edges of all these applique pieces with invisible thread and this will make them protrude out just a bit. And now we'll look at a third type of machine embroidery and it's called machine embroidered applique. Now this is done on an embroidery machine. An embroidery machine is a sewing machine that comes with an embroidery module or it's a freestanding embroidery machine that does nothing but embroider. I'm working on a baby lock Ulissimo and with all embroidery machines the first step is to load the digital file into my machine. I can do this easily by transferring the design from my computer to the machine using a flash drive. Once I've selected the file the machine first stitches the placement outline for my first applique shape. In other words, this placement line tells me exactly where to place this shape on the quilt block. 
Leaving the block in the hoop, I fuse the first shape onto the block. I'm using a small clover iron to do this because its very small ironing head allows me to place this applique shape with precision. Now you could also adhere this shape with a glue stick, but I really appreciate the precision that comes with fusing, and I don't need to worry that the applique shape will move at all as it's being stitched. I've returned the hoop to the embroidery machine, and now the stem is being embroidered with a really cool edge finishing stitch. I don't know if you can see this clearly enough, but this stitch is very three-dimensional and really looks almost as if I've sewn beads along the edges of this applique shape. Once the shape is finished, the machine stops and tells me to switch to my next thread color. It then stitches the placement outlines for the three remaining applique shapes on this quilt block. Could this process be any easier? Just as I did before, I'm fusing the remaining shapes onto the quilt block, making sure I stay just inside the placement lines that have been stitched. These are all shapes that I cut with my Sizzix machine using the applique cuts poppy sty and the stylized stem sty. Notice that the smaller flowers on this block are really just the cutaway shapes that are created when the large poppy flower was cut. What a great way to use your fabric to the max. Now that we're back at the machine, you can see that the machine is finishing the edges of the large flower first. As long as we've placed all our applique shapes inside the placement outlines that were stitched out, the edges will all be finished perfectly. Once the large flower has been finished, the machine stops and asks me to switch my thread colors. Once I've loaded a new thread color, it finishes the edges of the remaining applique shapes. Now the best part of all of this is while the machine is doing all this stitching, I'm finishing the quilting on another quilt using my regular sewing machine, so I'm actually working on two quilts at the same time. Once the block is done, all I need to do is remove the stabilizer and I've got a completely finished quilt block with beautifully embroidered applique. Now what we saw was really cool, but let me show you just one more way that machine embroidered applique can be done that will give you a lot more flexibility as far as what you can do with all these embroidered applique shapes. Here, the machine is embroidering the edges of this feather applique shape, but there is no underlying quilt block. This semi-transparent film it's being embroidered on is a water dissolvable stabilizer and that means that I'll be able to place this finished feather on anything I'd like. Once the edges are all finished, I cut away the excess stabilizer and then I place the feather in water to dissolve it. Once it's dry, I have an embroidered applique badge and I can free motion embroider these applique badges anywhere on a quilt top that I'd like. These feathers were all free motion embroidered in place using invisible thread. Pretty cool stuff, huh? So there's your tutorial on different types of machine embroidery for your applique quilts. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at patsy at patsythompsondesigns.com. Please don't place a question on my YouTube account because 99% of the time there's no way for me to answer those. So email me directly and check out my blog and check out our web store. Thanks a lot. So long for now.